Welcome back to the Green Yard. It's a beautiful uh, June afternoon. It's about four o'clock. Uh, today's actually been one of the hottest days of the year, which is shocking. Uh, we've had a very cold winter uh, this past winter and then now a very cool spring. It's only gonna be 104 today, which usually by this time of June, we've had at least uh, a couple 110 days. So very shocking that we've been so cool this year. It's still in the 70s at night, uh, which is fantastic. All of our, our fruiting and flowering trees are definitely loving this temperature here. So I'm over in our food forest. Uh, for those of you joining us for the first time, uh, we live on just over a third of an acre here in the Phoenix Valley. And um, we have a lot of flowering and fruiting trees. Um, and our goal is to kind of create kind of this edible, livable, uh, profitable landscape uh, and environment here in Phoenix. Um, a lot of our trees are uh, do very well here and I've gone through kind of how they do so well, which is what we're going to talk today about with our jackfruit tree. So we're here to talk about our beautiful jackfruit tree. Uh, it's doing very, very well. This is actually uh, its uh, third season. So it's been in the ground for almost three years. It's been in the ground through three winters. Uh, and it's been doing fantastic. Winters are really what we have to worry about with our jackfruits. Typically during the uh, summer, they do very well if they get that afternoon shade. Uh, when I say afternoon shade, I mean shade after uh, about 10, 11 o'clock. Although I've, I've realized with this tree that they can handle more of that full afternoon sun as well. If it's for only a couple hours like it's getting right now. We have our beautiful um, carry mango tree right here in front of us as well as our African tulip tree right here behind us uh, we have a smattering of other really amazing tropical fruiting and flowering trees including a soursop tree right behind the camera beautiful plumeria a job the cava a santal tree now a hull avocado tree and a lot more amazing fruiting and flowering trees that are doing a are wonderful here. If you want to see more of a tour of our food forest, go ahead. I'm including a link to that food forest tour. It really is an amazing space and I love being here and talking about it as well. Let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit more though about growing a jackfruit tree here in Phoenix, Arizona. Here we go. jackfruit tree it's about four feet tall right now putting up a whole bunch of new growth it's actually growing uh, exponentially so far this year you can see uh, on some of the branches actually you can see on this branch right here that it's grown about maybe eight inches already uh, kind of see this green this is all the new growth from this year um, so it has been doing very well has been growing a lot um, it's doing this thing right now where it's flushing out uh, its leaves rather quickly. I remember doing this last year as well. You can see how uh, there's leaves turning yellow already. I remember doing last year's uh, this kind of behavior last year as well in the spring. So I'm not sure if it's just a uh, springtime behavior that it does. Um, or if it is something a little bit different this year. I know with uh, the jackfruit, uh, last year I did provide some afternoon shade. Um, like I said, it's about four o'clock right now and it is getting a little bit of full sun, 
uh, that will die back after about five. So it gets about an hour of blasting afternoon sun. Uh, but it seems to be handling it like a champ. You'll see um, here if we look at the main trunk, we have all of these brand new uh, little baby branches everywhere. Um, it is sprouting out all over the place. So uh, the tree itself is very, very happy in this space and in this spot. I have protected it the last three winters and I will continue to protect it as well um, during the winter time. Typically that is the most potential for um, it not surviving is going to be during that colder weather. Typically during the summer weather it really likes it. Last year with our monsoons, when we, we had a really uh, a lot of monsoons last summer and it loved that extra humidity. It actually branched out. It was really dark green, very, very beautiful looking tree. Last, uh, end of last growing season, which would be uh, about that October, November time. Uh, it is positioned here under some heavy mulch. So I am growing it with that heavy mulch. Um, that's something that I recommend for all of my tropical fruiting and flowering trees is to do that heavy mulch, not only to try to add some organic material back into the soil, but also to um, help uh, with the water. So this tree only gets water once every two weeks this year. Last year it got water once uh, once a week. This year I'm cutting back and it is thriving with that once every two weeks. Um, it has been cooler like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Um, so if we do get to that 115 degree weather, uh, I may have to start watering it once every uh, week or so. Beautiful hummingbird coming in to uh, visit us it looks like. Hi buddy, what's going on? Uh, they really like to eat all the gnats and the bugs that are, are around. It's amazing when you create a food forest environment like this how much wildlife comes and visits. We have uh, probably 20 butterflies every day. We have our, our birds, probably hundreds of birds, uh, including our beautiful um, um, hummingbirds as well. So in terms of growing this jackfruit tree, like I mentioned, the heavy mulch uh, is definitely a must. Uh, it really does enjoy being in the ground. You can see the trunk is actually uh, pretty thick compared to what it was when it planted it. Uh, when I planted it, it was about the size of my finger and it was only about maybe a foot tall. So it has grown about three feet and definitely uh, grown a lot in terms of girth here as well. I do add agricultural sulfur to my soil because jackfruit trees require a lower pH than what we have here in the Phoenix area. Typically uh, jackfruit trees are between I believe 5.5 and 7 and maybe a little bit lower than that uh, for their pH and we here in the Phoenix area are about 8, 8.5. Eight so definitely need to have that agricultural sulfur to lower that pH and what that does is it allows the tree to take up those nutrients that are in the soil that are provided so any fertilizer or anything like that the tree won't be able to take it up unless it has that uh, lower pH it allows for the tree roots to actually take up those nutrients as you can see here putting off a whole bunch of new growth I really do love, 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 love this tree. All right, so pretty short growing uh, video here uh, for our jackfruit tree. Really, uh, jackfruit trees are very similar to our mango trees. So um, they can eventually handle our cold, especially if we don't have those really cold winters like our last winter where it's down into the 20s. Uh, they will do fine with, you know, that mid 30 lower 40 degree temperature once they mature uh, a little bit more i'm still going to protect it uh, i'm covering this guy he's kind of my prize and joy so uh, i'm definitely going to keep covering and protecting this tree until i can't anymore until it gets too big for me to do so um but um 
so a lot of my mango trees, like my carry mango tree that's right behind me, I don't cover that tree anymore in the winter. Even this past winter that was extremely cold, it thrived during the winter. Even in the uh, upper 20s when we hit 28 degrees in the green yard, it was still doing great and it's coming back. It's holding fruit this spring. Uh, definitely uh, doing great here. So. Um, I've heard not only from my own research, but also from other people growing jackfruit trees that they are very similar to those mango trees. So um, it'll be interesting to see how, how else they thrive. I think that's part of the reason why it can take more of this afternoon sun and still be doing good this year is because a lot of our mango trees, uh, they want to grow into that sun. They want to get that full sun in the afternoon. Um, so hopefully it continues to thrive here. Uh, in the food forest part of the green yard. <clears throat> really the key to my success, like I mentioned before, is that heavy mulching, keep that moisture, make sure that that ground is still moist, add in that agricultural sulfur to lower that pH to allow the tree to, to eat, and of course feed your fruit trees. Uh, I mentioned this with my uh, harvesting a dwarf bonanza peach tree that I just filmed as well. Sorry, there's lemongrasses in the way here. Um, you know trees love to eat just like how we love to eat and if you feed your fruit trees it's the most amazing thing they'll feed you with that wonderful fruit so uh there has been jackfruit trees that have fruited here in the phoenix area i've seen jackfruit trees with fruit on them so i know it is possible uh, and I'm hoping that someday here in the near future, maybe the next couple years, we actually get some fruit off of our jackfruit tree. In the meantime, it is a great conversation piece for me because uh, I can say, hey, you know, the biggest fruit in the world, jackfruit. Yeah, I have one of those trees and it's thriving here in the green yard and doing really well, putting off new growth. And uh, hopefully I'll get some fruit someday. If you have any questions about growing a jackfruit tree, please include them in the comments below. I go through and I uh, reply to most comments about once every week. So uh, I'd be happy to answer any additional questions you guys have. I'm just gonna enjoy, uh, you know, my beautiful jackfruit tree a little bit longer. And uh, as always, live green, plant lots, and of course have fun. We'll see you next time.